Hey everyone, what's going on? Today we are doing a, another accounting video. So this time the accounting video, it's going to be, uh, the focus is going to be around income statements. So what I've done is I'm going to pick out exercise 12.8. You see it on, you'll, you'll see it on the screen in a moment. Exercise 12.8, page 296. And we're going to be focusing on question C. We're only going to be doing question C. And that's because, quite simply, I really want to break down how to do the income statement. So it's not going to be our whole 12.8. It's just going to be 12.8 C. And it's going to be a step-by-step -step thing. Now, I just picked 12.8 because it's a list. I think we may have done it in class. I don't remember. But I like you're going to be paying attention to the content, not the process, if that makes sense. So you should be paying attention to the process, not the content. There we go. In terms of the content being the book. So that's where it is. Um, for whatever reason, if you haven't done 12.8, you haven't done C, it's exercise workbook page 227. And in your textbook, it's page 296. So I'll just bring that up now. And so... You can see that here. Now, obviously, I'll be working off this. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that looks good. I'm just going to get that to align right as well. So that, yep, yeah, that all aligns right. Bold, bold. Are they all bolded? Yeah, they're all bolded. you love to see it. So while it's bold, unbolding, I'll go through the question. So Benita Superior owns and manages a sporting goods store in Northcote called Superior Store. So Benita has provided the following info for 2025. Uh, so you've got the assistance wages, 9,200. Cost of sales, 73,000. GST settlement, 62,000. Rent, 10,000. Inventory on hand, 12,500 cartage in 2,300. Remember cartage in bringing the um, item into the business. You got GST received, you got heating and power, credit sales, 110,000, heating and power, 1,200, GST received, 10,500. You got sales returns, 5,000, inventory turnover, the average is 35 days. Now, we're gonna be doing the income statement, so we're just gonna go through what's relevant, what's not relevant, we're gonna do the dot point as well. So what I might do is I might just zoom in a touch on this and we'll just we'll just get this onto the screen. So I might just compare, I might, I'm gonna leave this here because I think it's important you see the textbook. So most other times, so we're gonna leave the textbook here. I'm just covering the required bit, which for C is preparing income statement, so it doesn't matter that much. But we're just gonna go item by item. I'm gonna explain what it is and why. And I think that's the easiest way, just what goes in, why it goes there. So if we start with assistant wages, we got 9,200. Now, assistant wages is gonna be paid by cash. So you're gonna pay cash, and you gotta look at it. The asset is going down, what's going down as well? Because A equals L plus O E. You'd think, I think it like going through, you would see, oh yeah, it's not liabilities. Liabilities doesn't go down. It's not like a liability is being reduced. So it needs to be owner's equity. Now, if we go to our definition of expenses, it is a decrease in assets or an increase in liabilities that leads to a decrease in owner's equity that's not drawings. And we can see that's where that fits in. Now, just some other key points here, dot point two, dot point two. Um, a physical count on the 31st of December revealed 5,500 inventory on hand. The inventory cards showed inventory on hand worth 600, 6,000, sorry. So immediately you see inventory loss of 500. So I'll talk about that at the end. So I'm just gonna be plugging numbers in. But assistance wages, obviously an expense because it is a cost incurred for running the business. And it meets that definition of an expense. So assistance wages. 
Notice I'm not going to, I'm going to put the numbers in, but I'm not going to sub add anything. So I'm just going to be ticking items off. Cost of sales. Cost of sales is how much does the inventory cost us to purchase that we've sold. So when we sell it, what is the cost incurred? So it's a decreasing asset that leads to a decrease in owner's equity. So again, it's an expense. So cost of sales, we plug our number in, which is 73,000. We then do GST settlement. So GST settlement is when we owe GST, it's a liability and we pay it back. So asset goes down in our bank and our liability goes down in the form of our GST payable. So not an expense. We don't include GST settlement here because it doesn't meet that definition. Rent though, that's a cost of running the business, decreasing asset, no decrease in, or no increase in liability, or no decrease in liability. So it's a decrease in owner's equity. And we go rent. And it is 10,000. Remember, it is a cost of running the business. Because the business exists, this cost exists. And you can just unpack where that all goes by verbalizing it. Now, inventory on hand at the 1st of January, 2025. That's a start and we're looking at the end. So this is not relevant. It would be relevant if we didn't have the cost of sales, but for all intensive purposes, not relevant. The reason this is included is to calculate inventory turnover because you need to be able to calculate average inventory. And that's where you would have the 6,000. Um, if we go cartage inwards, remember cartage inwards is the cost incurred. No, I can't say incurred a lot. The cost incurred for selling our stock or getting it in a way that is ready to be sold. Now, because it's coming in, we can add it to cost of goods sold because it's getting that item into a condition where it's ready to be sold. Now, cartage out or delivery out does not go in here. Now, I am going to add delivery in, okay? I'm going to add delivery in there because that's what else it could be called or cartage in. So that is our two numbers there. GST received. This is GST received for our transactions. So if we unpack that, we see that GST received, if it's in the form of cash or accounts receivable, the asset will go up in our balance sheet. But likewise, we're also looking, so it could be a revenue, but the liability goes up because the GST payable. That means it does not meet the definition of a revenue. It is not included in this answer. Um, heating and power. Again, that's like your electricity bill. And you're going to think, is that a cost to run the business? Yes, it is. So we go, we can't get this to work. We go heating and power, one, two, zero, zero. So heat and power, 1,200, because again, if we pay cash for it, decreasing, decreasing asset, and a is it an in, a decreasing liabilities? No, it's a decrease in owner's equity. That meets our definition of expenses. Every time you keep drawing back to that. Next, we have credit sales. Credit sales increases our accounts receivable, and it also increases our owner's equity because there's no increase in liabilities. So credit sales goes there. And we go credit sales, one, one, zero, 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 zero. Now you can go one of two ways here. There's no cash sales, interestingly. So we'll just go less, oh, really? I clicked bold on that, so that is a real kick in the teeth. We go less sales returns and we'll just go 5,000. One, one, five, zero, zero, zero. So if we see it's less sales returns, we can immediately put it in. If there's any changes, then we can deal with that as we go. Now, that's this whole list done. So now we need to go, ooh, what else? goes there, what else is included? And we go through our dot points. So if we have a look at our dot points, we see a physical count 
on the 31st of December, revealed 5,500 inventory on hand. The inventory cards at the same date showed inventory on hand worth 6,000. So if we look at our inventory cards, it says, oh, hey. And this is the inventory cards. It says $6,000 in the balance if they sell one. But when we did a count, we cut down and counted all the inventory and went, oh, it's only worth 5,500. That means what we say we have is lower than what's really there. And we need to go with what's really there because of faithful representation. So we need to bring the amount on our books down. And in this case, we're bringing inventory down. So inventory going down, it's an asset, it goes down. Is it a liability? No, there's no change in liabilities. It's a change in owner's equity. And therefore, it meets the definition of an expense. So less inventory loss. And we just put the number in, which will be 500. Now, all we need to do, once we categorized our items, notice how the whole time I didn't really chuck numbers in until I got all my info 100% correct. That's a good little habit to get into. Now I need to fix that. That becomes 39,800. 39,800 less 500 would become 39,300. See how much is easy this is just to plug in numbers as you go. So this is 20,400. So 39,300 minus 20,400 will give you 18,900. That's our net profit figure. So big overarching tips here that I think you need to take away. Firstly, plug all the numbers in. So work down your list and go, okay, this assistance wages obviously goes in, cost of sales goes in, rent goes in, and so on. Now. Fun fact about Mr. Donnelly, fun fact about any accountant, this less other expenses, you can have it in any order you want. The only thing that matters is you put it in the less other expenses. I think that's the important thing. But recognizing inventory loss needs to go between gross profit and adjusted gross profit, big difference. Likewise, the cost of goods sold covers both of these items and all sales related um, info, including sales returns needs to go in this section here. So there's a bit of a balance there you need to be aware of, or to be aware of, sorry, there you go. So it's just making sure, oh, hey, this is how we go about this. So my encouragement to you, go back, have a go at C for 2.8, 12.8 if you haven't already. If you have, pick out other questions where you've got to do an income statement and think, am I doing it this way? Because there is no penalization for getting all the items right first and then plugging in your numbers. So I think that's a good skill to have. Now, on that note, if you are stuck, you gotta make sure you ask for help, guys. We're gonna be doing, uh, we've done a practice sack. By the time you watch this video, you would have done the practice sack. So make sure you're asking for help on there. Please get your coursework in. Please stay safe, please look after yourself, please isolate, please look after each other. And also, if you can't read the background, and I'll just bring it up again, you can see I'll probably be watching The Bachelor. So you can talk about that with me at some point as well because I'm a bit of a dork and I love trashy reality TV. Anyway, see ya.